friends, this past month, all of us in kids ministry, we've been studying stories from the Bible about families. We've been learning about God's plan for families. And we've learned that one of the best ways families can care for and protect their children is to teach them the Word of God, the Bible. So I'm super excited that this weekend we have gathered together for a family service where we're all together ready to study God's Word. Okay, kids, are you ready? I have a question for you. What is something you always do no matter what? Think about that for a minute. What is something you always do no matter what? Okay, here's a second question. What is something you do without even thinking about doing it? Hmm, what is something you do without even thinking about doing it? For example, when you jump on your bike, do you sit there for a minute and tell your brain to tell your feet to get on the pedals, tell your hands to get on the handlebars, tell your body to sit upright and balance? Probably not, especially if you've been riding a bike for a while. You just hop on and go. You don't even think about it, right? Well, I can think of a couple of other things that we do without really thinking about it. We can breathe without thinking, and we can rely on a heart to keep beating. Have you ever thought about that? You can wake up every morning and you don't have to think about trying to be alive. You just get up and go, right? Okay, let's test something. I want you guys to take a big breath. I want you to hold your breath. That's right, go ahead. Whenever you're ready, hold your breath. Now parents, if you're sitting next to your kids, keep an eye on them. We don't want anyone to turn purple. All right, go ahead and let it out. Take a fresh breath. Pretty good job, you guys. But I bet you probably couldn't hold your breath for a really long time. Certainly not as long as a church sermon, right? Well, at some point, you have to let your breath out, right? You can't just stop breathing. You have to breathe. It's just natural. The Bible teaches us that prayer and thankfulness should be just like breathing for us. They should happen all the time naturally, and we shouldn't be able to turn them off. Let me show you. We're going to look in the New Testament at 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 through 18. These verses were written by the Apostle Paul, and they are full of advice for us. He tells us three things that we should never stop doing or that we should always do. Are you ready? Here they are. Always be joyful, never stop praying, and give thanks no matter what happens. You know what? Say those with me one more time. Are you ready? Always be joyful, never stop praying, and give thanks no matter what happens. Mm, do we have to feel thankful before we give thanks? No, we don't. Actually, practicing thankfulness, that protects us from wanting things that we don't have yet. And practicing thankfulness reminds us that God is good and that he's watching over us. How about prayer? Can you ever be in a place where you cannot pray to God? No, you can pray to God anywhere at any time. He's always accessible to us. In fact, don't forget, Jonah prayed from the belly of a fish and Daniel prayed from inside a lion's den. There is no place that you can get to where you cannot pray to God. The Apostle Paul knew that people who love Jesus can and should practice these three things. If we believe that Jesus is king, king of our heart, king of the world, king of the universe, wow, then we have real hope. And that means that we are confident that Jesus will keep his promises to us. And because that is true, prayer and thanksgiving, 
They should be as natural and persistent as our own breathing. We should practice them every day, everywhere. Well, as Kelly has been saying, there are things that we do just as a matter of habit almost, but that we continually do them, do them without thinking, uh, like breathing. Uh, we continue to breathe and, and do it throughout the day. And there is the expectation in this passage, even in this season, that we would continue to rejoice, continually rejoice, that we would continually pray, and that we would continually give thanks. Now, the problem is, is that uh, this year, 2020, has caused us to cease doing many of the things that we've been doing. Many of the things that became habit for us, that's part of the reason that we're feeling the anxiety that we're feeling, that a lot of what has become normal to us has been arrested, has been ceased, has, has been caught. You know, it, we've had to stop meeting the way that we would meet. We've had to stop uh, going out the way that we would go out. We doesn't feel the same when we go to the grocery store, when I, we haven't been to the movies. We, we don't go out to dinner the same. And, and yet, as we look at Thanksgiving, is this the right time to be thankful? Is this the right time to rejoice? Is this the right time to pray? Well, our passage is going to suggest that we should, we must continue to rejoice as Christians. We must continue to pray as Christians, and we must continue to give thanks as Christians, even in 2020. Uh, the passage begins in verse 16, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, with rejoice always. It's that simple, and rejoice always you might think, well, how? How can we rejoice always? Rejoice means to be merry. Does that mean that we should uh, have this thing that happens inside of us, this upwelling of happiness and, and thankfulness to, for the bad things that are going on in 2020? What does that look like? Uh, in Luke 1, we see that uh, it, the scriptures say, For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Leapt for joy. John the Baptist leaps inside of Elizabeth's womb when he meets Jesus that's, uh, that is now in Mary. So in Mary's womb, there is a, a leaping for joy. And at birth, at the beginning of the gospel story, Joy is attending the story. There's a rejoicing that's going on, and, and all of us would say, yeah, rejoice. Elizabeth is pregnant. Mary's pregnant. There's this story that God is bringing to completion uh, in, from the, that's been promised throughout the Old Testament, and there is reason to rejoice. But I would compare it with the end of the story, gospel story, or towards the end of it, in Luke 22, 45. And when he rose from prayer, Jesus has been praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, racked with grieving and, and anxiety. And it, when he rose from prayer, he came to his disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. He found them sleeping for sorrow. And, and which is it? I mean, should we be rejoicing only with birth and never rejoicing in the Garden of Gethsemane? Or are we to rejoice always? What, is God, what does God mean when he says rejoice always? Well, rejoicing is done in the, in the context of faith, believing that uh, there used to be a uh, something that the guys who were working out would put on their t-shirts when I was younger, pain is gain. It was an athletic phrase that if you're working through things and you're, you're stretching your body beyond what you think the limits, that on the other side of it, there is a gain to be had by this pain. Well, scripturally speaking, pain is always gain. As we, in the hands of Christ, Trust him with our difficulties, there is cause to rejoice. James 1, 2 through 4 speaks of that. Count it all joy. My brothers, when you meet various trials, trials of, of various kinds, uh, there's a counting of joy that we move it into a, the ledger of, I'm going to choose to be joyful over these difficulties. I'm going to choose to rejoice in 2020. 
because I know that God is, this is what it goes on, for we know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Paul knows what pain is about. He's not ignoring difficulties when he tells us to rejoice always. He's not suggesting that life is going to be easy now that we're Christians or from this point going forward. Everybody's hoping that 2020 ends soon. But there's no promise that things are going to get easier in 2021. We need to rejoice today because we know that God will turn these difficulties for good because we know who God is. Going through it with Christ, for Christ, and by Christ causes us to rejoice. Causes us going through 2020, knowing that Christ is with us, knowing that we can do 2020 for him, and knowing that we can do it by the power of Christ, the spirit that's alive in us, we can go through these difficulties and it causes us to rejoice knowing that in some way that we are joining Christ in his difficulties and in his suffering, that we suffer and we rejoice. We are to rejoice always. In verse 17, we are to pray always, pray without ceasing. We can pray without ceasing. And why is it hard to pray without ceasing? Because I have been a Christian for 35 years, 40 years, and I can tell you that it it can be difficult to continue to pray. It can be difficult to, to wonder, how is it that I can keep praying? What makes it hard to keep praying? Sometimes we feel like things are not getting better. Maybe at the beginning of COVID, we turned this to prayer and we said, God, would you end this? Would you solve this? Would you fix this? Look at the difficulties with business and look at the difficulties in our nation. Look at the unrest in our families, in our churches, in our country. Father, would you work and would you act? And sometimes we find it hard to keep praying because we feel like it's not getting better. And sometimes we find it hard to keep praying because we like how it's going. We think things are going well and we don't feel like there's a reason for God to change something or act on our behalf. We feel like we're handling this okay. And yet God tells us to pray without ceasing, whether things are hard or whether things are easy. Maybe it's too hard to keep praying. Why is it too hard to keep praying? Maybe because we feel like we're too busy. We have to get up early in the morning. We have to keep working. There's so many things to get done and the list doesn't seem to be ending and yet we are called to pray without ceasing. And I would argue that Jesus had a ministry that we might have felt like it's not getting better. That's how the disciples felt at the end. They're they're feeling like they couldn't even keep praying for sorrow. And maybe we could feel like it's going well and Jesus is you know, walking with us and this is all going fine. There's no reason to reach out to him. Maybe we feel like we're too busy. And yet Jesus models prayer for us. In Mark 14, verses 32 through 38, I take you back to that garden in Gethsemane. And we see, and then went, uh, they went to a place called Gethsemane and he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter, James, and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. Jesus was distressed and troubled. And he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed. And if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. We pray By faith, through the power of the Spirit, we pray without ceasing. We need to continue to pray. The prayer that is talked about here in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 is a petitionary prayer. Keep asking God. 
And in Jesus' case, he asks the Father to take this cup from him. He asks the Father, even though it is the will of God to say, the Father, to say no to Jesus and to not let the cup be taken from him, he is going to go to the cross. He is going to suffer and die. And yet he asks him, and at the end says, not my will, but yours be done. We take our doubts, our fears, our anxieties, our angers, and we turn it to prayer. We are to pray without ceasing. God is inviting us to make every experience with Christ, for Christ, by Christ. We do that by choosing to rejoice in our hard times and our good times, in all things, because we know that God is turning things for good and we know who God is. By faith, we believe this will turn. We choose to turn our difficulties to prayer by the power of the Spirit, even when we feel like it's not getting better, even when we feel like things are going well and we don't need God, even when we feel like we're too busy, we, by faith, by the Spirit, turn all things to prayer. When we don't pray, we sw slip towards not by Christ, for Christ, in Christ. We slip to without Christ. We slip into for me and by my power. We must choose by faith to rejoice in all things. We must choose by faith to pray without ceasing. Not related to my feelings. And finally, we must choose by faith to give thanks always. Give thanks for the good things. Give thanks for the hard things. How do we give thanks in 2020? How do we say, thank you, Lord, for a pandemic? How do we say, thank you, Lord, that Jesus is going to the cross? How do we say, thank you, Lord, that we are scattered and we don't know what to do? that we can't gather together? How do we thank the Lord when it seems like it's the third quarter and we're losing? And when we think about the football that we'll watch on Thanksgiving and then Sunday afternoon, we think about the football season. There are games that we know aren't going our way and yet it seems like everything's against us and the score is against us and yet we know that God's will is for good. I would have you consider with me some of the Psalms. In Psalms 7, 17, it says, I will give to the Lord the thanks due his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord, the Most High. I will give thanks to God because he's righteous, because he is turning things the right way, and he will turn things out for righteous, to a righteous end. In verse nine, chapter 9 and verse 1 of the Psalms, it says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all your wonderful deeds. This Thanksgiving, let me encourage you to remember the good things that God has done and that he is good at all times and that his righteousness will come about. In verse chapter 35 and verse 18, I will thank you in the great congregation, in the mighty throng, I will praise you. Whether you're gathered together as a family right now or here we are in a church community, we give thanks together. There is something healing and healthy when we praise God together in song. In chapter 69, verse 30, I will praise the name of God with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. Some have asked, why do we sing so many songs? Because it is good for us to sing songs out to God together and to hear one another singing those, that praise. In Psalm 100, verses 4 and 5, Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. We can enter into thanksgiving 2020, and we can bless God because God is good. And because his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness extends to all generations. 2020, God has not ceased to be good and he has not ceased to extend steadfast love to us and he has not ceased to be faithful to us. We can praise the Lord and that's in verse chapter uh, Psalm 106, verse 1. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. 
And finally, Psalm 118.1, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. We can give thanks in any situation, in all situations, because through the eyes of faith, we see that our God has not changed that things may seem hard and we can't see the end of them and we don't know how, where to turn and yet we can rejoice always and we can pray without ceasing and we can give thanks always because God has not changed and because he is good and his loving kindness is extended to every generation and his faithfulness is, is extended to every generation. Well, we finally, the scriptures give us the reason uh, why we rejoice always, why we pray without ceasing, why we give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do you want to know what God wants you to do today? He wants you to rejoice. He wants you to pray. He wants you to give thanks, not apart from the emotions that are happening today and apart from our feelings, we bring those to him in prayer. But we can give thanks because of who God is and because by faith we can look at who God is and we rejoice because of faith and we pray because of faith and we give thanks because of faith. We are those who believe because of Jesus Christ and because of that, in all circumstances, it is the will of God in Christ Jesus that we do these things by faith. By faith we rejoice, by faith we pray, by faith we give thanks. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in who you are and what you're doing for us. We rejoice even in difficult times knowing that you're turning them for good and that you're completing the work in us, giving us steadfastness and patience and helping us to grow up in our faith. We know that you mean what's going on in our lives for good. So we rejoice, Father, we cry out to you. We recognize that in our distress, we don't want to keep going through COVID anymore. And we lay that at your feet, knowing that not our will, but your will needs to be done because you are a good and righteous God and you can see the whole story. So we will wait on you, but we will cry out to you in our fears and in our anxiety. And finally, Father, thank you. Thank you for your son. Thank you for that he suffered first for us. Thank you that he showed us how to suffer and how to pray and how to give thanks. Thank you that you are a God who came for us, found us, redeemed us, and restored us. And thank you that we are your children. It is our privilege to live in this generation for you. May we, by the power of your spirit and by faith, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and be thankful. In Jesus' name, amen.